Okay, so here we're gonna do a normal stress problem. This one's pretty straightforward. This is problem uh, 117. This is one of the fundamental problems. It's on page 38 in Hibbler. So the problem is here we have this uh, beam. Uh, we can ignore the weight of this. It has a linear distributed loading on there. And then it's suspended by these two uh, bars, uh, AB and CD. And it gives the cross-sectional areas of both of those. They're 10 and 15 millimeters squared, respectively. Okay, so this is a design problem. What it wants you to do is find uh, W, all right? W being the peak force in the distributed load, such that the normal stresses, the average normal stresses in AB or DC um, does not exceed 300 kilopascals, okay? So what you have to do is find the stress in each one of those elements, the normal stress, in terms of W. So W is not given. So I know sometimes this is uh, a cause of frustration for students having to deal with variables instead of numbers, but in fact just do everything in terms of W, and then we'll see we can solve for W such that the stresses, one of, one of the two elements will be the limiting case, okay? And then that's the one that we have to make sure does not exceed 300 kilopascals. Okay, so first, the first trick is to find the normal stresses in uh, AB and DC, okay? All right, so we're not getting the reaction forces action in this beam, but we'll draw a free body diagram of this beam to actually get the normal forces exerted on um, uh, AB and DC, okay? So, um, if we want to, you want to consider it, we can try, uh, well, let's do it through here. We'll imagine taking sections right through this point, okay? So if we draw a free diagram just of that element, here's the beam, and now let's assume uh, at point A, we have a force due to the uh, support AB. So let's assume that AB is in tension, in which case that force will be acting up. We'll call that force AB. Likewise at CD, it's also acting upwards. Okay. And then we also have the downward distributed load. Okay, so we don't know W, but we're going to carry that as a variable and set that so that the stresses don't exceed A, B, and D, C. All right. So once we do that, uh, we can do the free body diagrams on uh, this lower beam to determine F, A, C, and F, C, D. Now those. If we look at a free body diagram just of, say, element AB, the equal and opposite force, obviously, this is FAB, and then upwards you'd have the uh, opposing force FAB. Likewise with CD as well. So this reaction force here is actually going to be the normal force in AB. Right? And if we assume this to be in tension, Right, positive, and if we assume this to be positive intention, and if we get FAB to be a positive value, then this is in fact intention, and obviously it probably it will be an intention. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, let's first actually replace. Let's redraw the free body diagram. We'll do the equivalent force of the distributed load. So this will be a point force that acts at the one-third point from the maximal end. So this is going to be um, 2 meters, and this will be 4 meters, 
okay? And then the magnitude of this force, we'll call it P, is going to be the area underneath this low triangle, which is one half W times this length, and the length is six meters. Okay, so that's going to be uh, three W, and the magnitude of that is going to be um, newtons. Okay, so W is in units of newtons per meter. Okay. All right. So now we can do sum of forces in the y direction. Oops, I forgot to draw these forces. F A B F C D. So we do sum of forces in the y direction. Sum of forces in the x gives me nothing, obviously. So sum of forces in the y direction. F A B plus F C D equals. Oops. Plus. I'm sorry. Getting ah, being sloppy. It's minus. 3w, because it's a downward force, that's p, has to go to 0, okay? All right, now the other one is sum of moments. So let's do sum of moments, and let's do it about point uh, a. Let's do point a. Those are going to go to 0. So p exerts a negative moment, so it's uh, negative 3w. And its moment arm is 4 meters. I should put my units in here. Okay, meters. Newtons. It's Newtons. Um, okay, 4 is the arm. And then FCD exerts a positive moment. That's plus F C D and its moment arm is going to be 6 meters. Okay? And that has to equal 0. Okay? So from that equation I can actually get F C D. This one will give me that F C D is equal to uh, 3 times 4 over 6 W that's going to be in newtons, okay? So that's um, 2w, okay? So that's the force in uh, element CD in terms of the magnitude of this distributed load, w, all right? Now doing this, the sum of forces in the y, we can get the force in AB, okay? So using the sum of forces in the y, this one, we get F A B equals 3W minus F C D, which we already know is 2W, so that just gives me W. Alright? So the force in A B is half of the force in C D. So those are the forces. But the problem is to find the normal stress. So to get the normal stress, it's called the normal stress in CD. This is the average normal stress in CD. That's FCD, the force in that element, over the area in CD. And likewise, the normal stress in AB is the force in AB over the area AB. Okay, so this one and now we'll get this in terms of W, so that'll allow us to get the stress as limited by that 300 kilopascal stress condition. Okay, so for CD is 2W, and that's in Newtons, over uh, AC, that's the area in AC, well, I'm sorry, AB, CD, CD, excuse me, which is up here, that's the 15 millimeters squared. So be careful of the units here because we got millimeters and newtons. And then this one, so that gives me um, so 2 over 15 is uh, that right? Z 
0 0.133 times W, and that's going to be in newtons per millimeter squared, which is the same as uh, kilopascal. All right, now we do the second problem. The second element, uh, stress in element FAB. So the force in FAB is just W, and that's newtons over the cross-sectional area of AB, which is 10 millimeters squared. which is 0 0.1 W, and I should say, I don't have any kilopascals, it should be actually, it should be megapascals, I'm sorry, megapascals, because a uh, millimeter is 10 to the minus third, you square it, it's 10 to the minus six, divide it, that makes it a megapascal, so I'm sorry, off by off. Order of three magnitude. All right, but that's it. So these are the stresses in megapascals in terms of W. So we could write them in terms of kilopascals. Move it over by three. So this gives you 133 W kilopascals, and this one is 100 W kilopascals. Okay? So now when I look at this, obviously the limiting case is going to be the str normal stress in element CD, because it's going to always be higher, right? For a given W, it's always going to be higher. So that's the one that's going to limit our design. That's going to limit the uh, uh, value of W. So we know now that, you know, the other, way, the other way you can think of it is more mathematically, the maximum of sigma CD, sigma AB, must be less than or equal to 300 kilopascals, okay? And so for that situation, we know that the one that's going to limit it is this quantity, right? So we have to set, set it such that 133 kilonewtons, I'm sorry, 133 times W kilopascals has to be less than or equal to 300 kilopascals. Okay, so that means the maximum value of W is going to be W equal to 300 over 133. Okay? And so that gives me Two point two five six. Okay. So that's the value of W. All right. So that's going to be newtons. Okay.